Hey, War Gamers, we're gonna be doing some Daka Talk. We're gonna do some Chaos Space Marine this time. I uh, got a lot of people asking about doing this the same as we uh, did for the Orcs. So, uh, Chaos Space Marines, first of all, the book is gorgeous. They have a lot of different, uh, a lot of nice artwork, and they've changed a good amount of things um, with uh, Chaos Space Marines. The biggest one noting, as everybody knows, they got rid of the Def or the Dreadnought, and and replace them with an equal fitting, I think better, close combat and shooty um, walker. Uh, there's five, despite with all the factions and everything, there's five main different types of Chaos Space Marines within, under these, the Chaos umbrella. There's just the regular Chaos Space Marines, and then there's the Mark of Corn. Um, most of the characters in the back of the book you can actually give the Mark of Corn to. And what it does is actually gives them rage, so two two dice on the charge, and then counter attack special rules. If someone were to attack you, you pass the leadership, and then you can get an extra dice as if you were charging normally. Not two, you so two on the charge and one on the defense, which is really good. Um, usually somewhere around a 33 percent, 25 to 33 percent increase in attacks just from having market corn. Uh, then there's Nurgle. Your toughness is increased by one. Um, this is what I have most of my experience with is Nurgle. Uh, I just like them a lot because your guys are just harder to kill. It's, I believe it's one of the more expensive of the four to have is the upgrade. And, um, and then there's the Mark of uh, Zinch, which gives you a plus one to your invulnerable save which is to a maximum of plus three. So if you have Terminators that automatically get a plus five, they are a plus four and vulnerable save. So that's that's great, and not to mention everything on the board, even if it just has armor saves, automatically gets a plus six uh, and vulnerable save. So that's, that's pretty, that's good. Uh, I never use, I didn't use them too often, but uh, I could definitely see that as a benefit for let's say Terminators to to make sure that your investment is taken care of. Uh, and then the last one is Mark of Slanesh. Uh, this one gets a plus one to initiative, and uh, then the Psyker, um, well each, each faction has their own psychic test that you have to pull at least one of your psychic abilities from if you have a Psyker. So Mark of Corn is rage and counter attack, so you get more attacks on the charge and on the defense. Nurgle your toughness is plus one, Mark is inch plus one to your uh, invulnerable save, and plus one to initiative for Slanesh. So that being said, um, we're going to start off with the HQs. And the first one is Abaddon, if I can actually find him here. Uh, I don't, I've never had, a, I never used him. He's extremely expensive, he has 265 points, but he has all the marks that we were talking about. I'm sorry, he can take uh, Chosen as troop choices, which is an elite unit um, that can take specialty weapons like Meltus Plasmas and a lot of them. Uh, next one is Blackheart. Never really used him. I've never used him. Uh, again, he's pretty... I mean, pretty expensive for what he does. Uh, he... He's in power armor, you can't really do any upgrades on him, he just comes as is. And he's fearless, independent character, he has a... Uh, he's preferred enemy against any kind of space marine. Um, I haven't used him, so... I could see how he could be pretty effective. He's got a good amount of attacks, decent amount of wounds at 3. Instant death for 160 points though. Um, <clears throat> that would be tough. Karn the Betrayer, I only recently had experience with him against my orcs if you saw my last battle report. He's pretty amazing. Um, again, he's the Mark of Corn, so he can take Berserkers, which is their little segment elite unit as troop choices. They're more of a just a extremely heavy close combat um, uh, group. And he always hits on a 2+. plus. He's 160 points. 
the 160 points, I believe, is worth it. Um, he has, let's see, I believe he has Armor Bane, which he can take down uh, tanks very well. The He always hits on a 2, but if you roll a 1, then he instead hits a friendly unit. That's kind of like a randomness like orcs, but for how strong he is, it's worth it. And his melee is AP2, so definitely, definitely worth it. Plus one strength, AP2. So his strength is strength six, AP2. Well worth it, I think. I've never had him. I've only played with Korn a little bit, but I can see him being worthwhile. Then uh, this other one, I don't know how to pronounce it, but the Airman. He's more of a, um, let's see, he's more of like a heavy sorcerer, and he allows, he's the mark of Zinch, so now you can have the Thousand Sons as troops, which is their segment. Uh, he's just a heavy psyker. Um, he has a lot of great abilities. He's really pricey at 230. But what he can do with his psychic abilities is pretty impressive. Again, I don't have too much experience with Thousand Sons. But um, based on his stat line, and he's a mastery level 4, so he can cast up to 4 spells or you know, two of the two heavy spells per turn. So he, he's pretty good. Um, then there's Typhus, which is a Nurgle. Um, He can make Plague Marines as troop choices. Uh, and he actually, he's 230 points. Again, pretty pricey. His toughness is five, so he can be instant death with a close combat, like strength 10, which I think is kind of lame considering he's 230 points, but he's amazing. Um, page 61. Well, right off the top of my head, a couple things he can do. Number one, he's got a demon weapon, so he gets uh, D6 more attack. He's at initiative 1, but he's plus 2 strength, AP 2, demon weapon, force weapon, unwielding. So he gets D6 plus attacks on his already 4 on the charge, so he can actually have up to 10 attacks, and all those are instant death. That's pretty amazing. Not to mention he can turn all your chaos cultists uh, into zombies, which they can't sh no longer shoot but they get fearless and feel no pain and slow and purposeful um, special rules. So, 90 points to have 20 extra models with Typhus that have all feel no pain and they're fearless. So that's the one downside of cultists is that sometimes they're fearless and you lose in close combat, the whole squad can get wiped out. So I think Typhus, one of the few units I use, is pretty is well worth it and then uh, Lucas the eternal um, 165 points uh, really good close combat I never got to use him but I have seen his model here and there he has a number of um, he's he's pretty good for 165 points he's well worth it three wounds and he has, he can take Noise Marines, which is a Selenesh or yeah, Selenesh troop type class as choices. And he has a number of close combat abilities for the most part that makes him very lethal. Um, and there's the uh, Chaos Lore, which I. used a lot, especially for lower point games, he's well worth it. He's 65 point base, but you can pump him up as high as you want. Usually what I did was is I put him, I made him, well because I had a Nurgle army, so I gave him Nurgle, so his toughness is 5. I put him in Terminator armor, which gives him 2+, plus. and then I usually gave him a Power Fist, and, um, and I ended up giving him yeah, either Combi Flamer or Combi Melta. That's what it was modeled out as, is a Combi Melta. It, can, it was pretty helpful. 
So he's toughness five, and he's fearless. Um, backing up to the cultists, thinking they're great units, they're not fearless. So what you could do is just throw a bare bones chaos lord in that group of 20 guys, so then they'll be fearless. So they'll they'll never run away in close combat or get overrun. So that would be worth it. Plus the chaos lord has. For minimal amount of points, you can make them very effective in close combat. Um, like I said, he's pretty good. And if you give him the Corn Nurgle, Slanesh upgrade, then you can take those particular troops, those particular elite choices as as troop choices. Corn Berserker, Nurgle, Plague Marines, Slanesh is uh, Noise Marines. So. The next is Sorcerer. I only dabbled with this a little bit with a customer that had one. Um, you can't take him with corn, but you can have him modeled in a corn army. He just can't be the mark of corn. Um, you can upgrade to two additional levels of Psyker. So it could be a maxed out at level three Psyker for, what is it, 50, for 110. If you're going to max him out at level 3, you might as well just go all out and uh, go for that other HQ. What was it? I say if you're going to max him out, you might as well go for that 160 point. I don't know, he's 230. Never mind. Well, sorcerers are good. Um, mastery level, level 3 is always nice. I wasn't really into the psychic. I'm still not. I'm going to have to get used to it when I switch to Tyranids coming up soon. Uh, this next one's a huge one. Uh, almost every Chaos Army should probably have at least one. It is the Demon Prince. Uh, he's 145 points base. Uh, pretty expensive, but well worth it. I would say auto-include wings. Wings are always included. So now you're looking at 185 base. And I would always throw in power armor. So now you're looking at 205 base. He doesn't come with an armor at all, but he does come with uh, a 5 plus invulnerable like every demon does. 20 points for 3 up uh, should be auto include. So he's auto included to 205. I've seen him, tons of people run him in various ways, uh, mostly corn and Nurgle. Um, for various reasons and you can even get them up you can even upgrade their mastery levels except for corn I believe yeah exactly so they can't be corn and he's got preferred enemy on uh, he's got veterans on the long of war which is preferred enemy against space brains any kind of space brains next is a warp smith I've seen this used against me a couple times uh, he's pretty he's good for how cheap he is He's only 110 points. Uh, he's good at report, repairing vehicles, so what I've seen him with tactics is that they'll have a... Um, like a Forge Fiend or a Vindicator or a, a, a Predator like off in the distance and have this guy behind there. Not only are you protecting your HQ, but you're also... Uh, able to repair tanks and vehicles. So he's pretty handy for how cheap he is. And then you can also upgrade him with um, a mark. If anything, I would probably do Nurgle just to make him slightly harder to kill on an instant death basis. But um, I can see being. I never had his model, so. But he looks good. Dark Apostle, never, never used him. Let's see, page 35. Uh, he's pretty cheap, probably for lower point gains. Uh, the one beneficial thing is six inches, you get to use his leadership, so most Chaos Space Marines are 8 or 9 anyway, so him being 10 helps a little bit. At the beginning of the game, you get to roll on the boon table. I don't, except for like smaller games, I don't see him being that great. 
I mean, he's cheap, 105 points, and adding a mark on top of that um, wouldn't be too bad. All right. Hey, we're gamers. Uh, gamers, we're moving on to troops. Chaos Space Marines. I think Chaos Space Marines actually took a hit in six, as well as their new codex. They made them slightly cheaper, but now you have to pay for their close combat, which then equals them out from the latest edition that they have. Um, you can pretty much kit them out with almost anything, except you max out with... Um, you can only get... Well, the good news is you can get up to, I believe, 20 of them. Yeah. So you can get up to 20 Space Marines. This is the only way I could see them being beneficial is 15 to 20, three up power saves with two most likely Meltas in the group. Either Meltas or Plasma Guns in a group of, uh, and maybe even Nurgle Mount or Corn Mount if you're wanting to do close combat. If you're gonna do Corn, then I would do the close combat weapon that's only two points each. So two times 10 is 20. So for you know a group of 10 with corn at close combat might be pretty good. They're cheaper than berserkers, but I still think a group of 20 of these guys with like a, a flamer and a melta would be great. A flamer if someone were to attack you and a melta if you were to get near a tank of some kind. They have a huge variety of things you can take and mutations, melta bombs, but for the most part, you want to use your specialty elites and really go with a type of army. If you're going to go corn, just go corn. Maybe have a segment of troops or specialty units that might. I, personally, I don't, I don't think we should be mixing the gods. Some gods hate each other and have benefits versus each other. Um, I've seen people that every unit in their army is almost a different type of demon or. Nurgle this, and then a Slanesh that, and then a um, corn assault group. So I don't like that, but kind of goes against the lore. But anyways, next is the cultist. I like the cultists. They're super cheap. 90 points for 20 of them. You can easily pick up 20 of them on eBay, dirt cheap. Um, the only upgrades I'd ever give them would be to either go zombies with typhus which means you don't upgrade them at all you just leave them bare bones and they have feel no pain and uh, yeah just feel no pain the only other time I would do that is I would upgrade them with Nurgle uh, and throw a Lord in there so they're toughness 5 and maybe even have those the auto gun so they have a little bit better shooting because then they're just like shooter boys um, yeah, essentially they're just shooter boys with better ballistic skill. But uh, I've, I've used them, I like them. Uh, heavy stubber, don't really need it. Maybe throw a flamer or two in that group of 20. Just in case someone attacks you, you get six, up to six free wounds on it. As well as the overwatch for them. Alright, next we're going to be moving on to elites. Uh, they don't have too many troops because a lot of the elites can be converted to troops. So the first one is Chosen. Now Abaddon makes these troop choices. These are like the Stern Guard of Chaos. Um, you can actually take up to 10 and you can actually replace a lot of them with specialty type weapons. Whether Melta guns, Plasma guns, Flamers, you can go crazy with them. Um, I've always found success with a squad of either Meltas or Plasmas. Uh, let's see here. So it's up to four may choose the options. So you can have up to four Meltas. You can have up to, I'm sorry, up to five Meltas in a group. That's pretty pretty awesome. Especially if you run around in a, in a Rhino doing um, either snapshots or shooting out the, the hatch and then turning out, unloading, and just melting anything. That's a good Terminator, anti-Terminator group, is you have 
ten of these guys in a rhino running around with, with Meltas. Not combi Meltas, regular Meltas. And then adding, I'd probably give, because they're going to be heavy shooty and people are going to try to rush them, I would give them Mark of Corn so they're harder to take down. It's three points a model. So 30 points to make sure that you guys last a little longer is worth it. The next was Possessed. I had the model, never used them. Um, just seems like there's so many better things than the elite choices that, that you could just do better with. I mean, they're demon, they're fearless. They're, they seem to be pretty good in close combat, but uh, I never used them. I mean, I, I had the model, I just never got around them. It just seems that elite, you only get, I think, three elites, and there's so many better things that you can place in there for the points as well. They're kind of pricey. Uh, next are the Chaos Terminators. Um, I like, I really like Chaos Terminators. Most of the time, I gave them Nurgle. So they're toughness 5, 2 up save. Um, and you can go to town with all kinds of close combat or shooting weapons. And they're really good. I like them. I could definitely say, see Terminators doing uh, Zinch. If you're going against a heavy melt or heavy plasma army, give them that so that they have a 4-up invul, which makes them that much better. And I would probably go at minimum of a group of 5. It says 95 points for 3 of them. You have to add at least 2 more on there. And usually I run them in a... What is it? Uh, I usually run them in a Land Raider. A rhino is too susceptible, and then they're just, they're really slow moving across the board. So that's the bad news. The next is the Hellbrew. Um, it's the new Def, uh, well not Def Dread, I keep saying Dread The The new Dreadnought for Chaos Space Marines, which a lot of people were kind of bummed that they swapped out the Dreadnought and everything. I love the Hellbrew. Um, a multi melta He's good at close combat. You can swap out a number of things, but the model is as is with the multi-melt and close combat. But, you know, they might come out with a, a kit for this. I would be shocked if they didn't. But Walkers kind of took a hit in 6th edition because they only have, what, like three hole? Yeah, they only have three hole points. But uh, I, I like him a lot. He does have the, the craze special rule. Closest as possible. So. You hit him, you just piss him off. That's it. Uh, mutilators. Uh, they are the close combat version of the obliterators. Never use them. Don't like the model. Don't see a use for them. I would never take them. There's, again, there's so many things that you can do in the elite section that they would just waste space. And they're expensive. 55 points a model for you just to have a, a close combat Terminator. Granted, you get to pick which close combat you, weapon you want, but I don't see a benefit in it. I would never take them. I may experiment with them, but I, I would never take them. Next elite was Corn Berserkers. This is the Corn the Betrayer that can take them as troop choices. Uh, these guys are really nice. Uh, they are on the pricey side. They're just heavy, heavy close combat guys. Uh, you can take plasma pistols and things, but for the most part, they are fearless and 100% assault. So you're either running land raiders or rhinos with groups of 10 of these and everything. 